Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar during the Open Education Week on learning innovations and learning quality. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this webinar. And uh, I'd like, first of all, to check um, if um, the sound and um, all the quality of this um, online community is working quite well. And using also this um, opportunity to introduce to you um, Igor from the kind uh, host and organizers of the Open Education Week, um, just to say a um, quick hello to everybody here. Igor, can you, can you hear me and can you say just hello to everybody? Uh, welcome everyone to the session. Uh, thank you for your participation and thank you especially to Christian for making himself available for this, for this session. Uh, Christian, I think uh, uh, your idea was that you wanted to have uh, this run in a sort of a uh, discussion format and that you wanted everybody to sort of introduce themselves at the beginning of the session. Is this still uh, correct? Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. Um, well, just to give you an idea how uh, this webinar will be organized, um, I would prefer not to bother you now with um, some kind of uh, present presentations or slides to be shared, but what I would like to facilitate is an open discussion and debate amongst all participants here. Um, concerning um, our selected topic, learning innovations and learning quality, the future of um, open education and free digital resources. And uh, for that reason, I'd like, first of all, to make a short round call that all participants can um, just um, introduce themselves uh, quickly by stating your name and one sentence about your uh, background and affiliation. And um, then um, just enter our discussion, because I believe that it's most um, uh, beneficial for everybody to um, share your experiences with all and to hear also um, the experiences from the others. Um, I will start after the round call with a short remarks why we have selected that topic here and in the floor. But first, um, let us have a short round call that everybody can introduce him and herself, and using that also the opportunity for the sound check. My name is Christian Schracke. I'm with the University of Duisburg Essen, but also adjunct um, professor at the Korean National Open University. I'm responsible for um, the international um, cooperation at um, the fields of open educational resources as well as open educational policies and uh, strategies, and dealing a lot with learning innovations and learning quality, as you will hear in a minute. And uh, maybe we can just go around by using uh, the list of participants in the alphabetic order, that means next uh, to the moderator, Igor, who has already introduced and welcomes everybody. Uh, next one would be Anne Christine Tannhäuser, followed by Karine B, and so on. Hello, everyone, again. Um, so, as Christian mentioned, my name is Igor, and I work for the Open Course Consortium. Hello, this is Anne Christine Tannhäuser speaking. Uh, I'm an international project manager at the University of Duisburg Essen, and I've been previously uh, working uh, for initiatives in the area of open education. Next would be Karin B. Could you just introduce uh, yourself? I think you have to click maybe on the button um, speaking with the microphone. Um, and then um, just try if you can speak up. If you cannot speak up, then please use the room and uh, leave a message there. Oh. 
Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Karin. And next would be Krista. Please uh, speak up or just indicate in the chat that uh, you cannot uh, speak today. Thank you. Hello, it's Krista here. Hope you can hear me. Thanks. I'm in the West Midlands, UK. Um, hello everyone, this is uh, Cornelia Hemstedt. I'm also at the University of Duisburg Essen, so I'm working with Christian and Anne. And um, I have been um, also been working in European projects on open education. Hello, my name is Dion van der Merwe. I'm with UNISA and I'm involved in the Open Education Resources Project at UNISA. Hello, uh, my name is Kerry De Hart. I'm also in South Africa at UNISA and I'm the Open Education Resources Coordinator for the University uh, to get the University going to contributing and using Open Educational Resources. Hello, Gary. Can you speak up, please? Or just inform us in the chat? Hi, can you hear me? It's Kerry DeHart. I'm from South Africa and UNISA. I'm the Open Education Resources Coordinator for the University. Thank you very much for the ongoing communication in the chat. That is um, very good. Uh, next would be Laia. Could you speak up, Laia, or just use the chat, please? OK, thank you very much, Laia. And next would be Mina. Hi, can you hear me? My name is Mina. I'm with the Open Courseware Consortium. Christian, I heard your talk um, last year at the Educa Berlin event. It's good to see you again. Thank you. It's uh, good to meet you again, too, for your interest. Next is Neil. Neil has already. Um, introduced himself a little bit in the chat. Maybe you can speak up again. Neil, please. OK, it seems that uh, Neil is not uh, also with us with the microphone. Um, he, oh, he used the chat. Regina, now it's up to you. Please. Hi, can you hear me? Well, I am Regina Schultz. I am a teacher's trainee in Germany, and I have no experience with open education so far, but I'd love to uh, get introduced to it. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now it's up to Rita. OK. Also, Rita has no microphone with her. But thank you very much for joining. And now, last but not least, it's Stephanie.
Okay. Um, now we have got a huge challenge because um, the majority of participants is uh, joining but without microphone. Uh, that will not uh, facilitate our um, common discussion. However, uh, we will keep an eye, of course, on the chat room, and I will repeat all um, questions or major concerns that will be expressed in the chat room um, that everybody is aware and can maybe also answer or address um, some of uh, the questions here. Please uh, do not stop using the chat room, but you're most contribute also via the chat room. It's uh, not the easiest way to communicate, but better um, than to stay silent. And uh, we appreciate any feedback um, by speaking up as well as by the chat room. As I said in the beginning, um, we have selected our um, topic for this webinar that is called Learning Innovations and Learning the future of open education and free digital resources due to several reasons. And uh, one major reason for that is um, our um, experiences that we have made during the last years that were leading to the establishment of our annual conference. This conference is called LINK. And LINK is the abbreviation for learning innovations and learning quality. The annual motto of this conference is the future of digital resources. And I don't want to bother you now with marketing for the conference. You can find everything on the conference website if you're interested in that. But to give you an idea of why we have set up this conference, and that will lead us also to maybe one of um, um, our central points to discuss here, was the fact that there are a lot of conferences and a lot of discussion, a lot of journals dealing with learning innovation. And on the other hand, also a lot of conferences and discussions and journals dealing with learning quality. None of them is trying to bridge these two, it seems to be separated words, and to have a combination addressing both most interesting and uh, most important topics of learning innovation and learning quality. That was the rational and the main driver why we have set up that conference learning innovation and learning quality. It will take place in May this year in Rome and I come to join, but uh, I don't want to talk about this conference now, but to talk about um, learning innovations and learning quality from a specific point of view. Because we are here in the Open Education Week. And the Open Education Week is, of course, promoting open education as a mechanism and strategy to change the way how we can learn and teach in the future education. Open education combines a lot of different strategies and approaches. And one of them is, of course, um, dealing with the question concerning free availability of learning resources, and that means also digital resources. And what we have found out that um, a lot of things are happening in the field of open education, and a lot of open education resources are produced at the regional level, but it is still difficult to um, find them and to use them for your own purposes. And for that reason, it's highly appreciated that there are such initiatives like the Open Courseware Consortium, who are bringing together and um, collecting um, open education resources with uh, free license agreements and uh, a free right to use into a way and uh, into repositories that are facilitating your selection easily. What I would like to ask you first as the introductory uh, question, what um, do you consider as the major concern or the major challenge at the moment for um, establishing open education um, in the future? We have already done first steps 
towards open education, but um, it um, certainly um, confirm open education is not taking place all over the world, in, in particular not in uh, formal education to schools and higher education. That's why I'd like to ask you, what do you think is the current most challenging barrier or um, most challenging um, focal point that we should address? Okay, thank you very much for your contributions here in the chat room. And speak up at any time, of course, if you have the uh, opportunity uh, and the luxury to share a with you. Um, yes, working definition of open education was the first question from um, Igor as um, um, the host here. And I believe that um, we can use open education as the umbrella term that is um, not only addressing um, the open access to open education resources, but also um, as uh, the umbrella term that is um, bringing together all different approaches for opening up education in a way that um, the pupils and students can work together in a way that uh, they can use, of course, open educational resources, but also follow open educational designs and patterns, for example, like online collaboration and online cooperation, but also be classroom um, cooperation, of course. Krista has uh, mentioned that uh, finding the right resource can be time consuming, and that is, um, of course, one of a big challenge here. Um, Neil is answering that it is easy implementable in classes, but um, here we have uh, still the problem that we are um, just saying at the local regional level. Many individual lecturers fear that open will mean for their future as what they what will be means for their future as lecturers, and here Krista is opening the discussion how the role of teachers and uh, lecturers will change. Mm. OK, now it's uh, gaining progress here in the chat room. I cannot repeat now every uh, chat um, um, statement here. Um, you can move, by the way, the chat room, as already indicated by Gina, um, to the right or to the left. Then it will become a separate window, and that you can increase, that you can um, see as many um, um, chat statements as you want. Hi, it's Dion here. Um, I'd just like to ask, you know, um, Kerry already introduced uh, self as a team. He says in charge of the OER project. And we are trying to get the library involved. Um, can you maybe just give us an idea of what your uh, experience is with, with getting the library involved as a part of finding resources and making them available to the various um, academics? Well, um, maybe I can just uh, share with you um, our uh, own experiences here, uh, dealing not only with um, the library in our university, but also with um, other libraries and as well as repositories worldwide. Um, concerning our own library, we had a good um, um, step forward by um, the assignment of um, 
open uh, strategy uh, directorate. And um, that was the door, the door opener that we have now also um, a specific um, sub um, uh, library only for um, um, open and uh, digital um, resources. But that was um, only feasible and achievable by um, the push from the rectorate. That means uh, you need uh, some um, support by um, the top management. Um, without that, um, we had also difficulties to convince them that open educational resources and um, free uh, digital um, materials are, are interesting for them. And um, Concerning, um, let's say, the European or international level, we are involved in um, several projects um, that are dealing with um, um, the objective to federate and harvest um, existing uh, repositories of um, digital resources. That means that we want to put together um, existing um, databases and um, to um, facilitate the access to the digital resources, that you don't have to uh, crawl and search in um, many different libraries if you are searching for specific um, uh, digital material, but that you can just go to your own um, library that you are very familiar with and um, through the harvesting, it will be facilitated that you will be displayed with the results from all other repositories in addition. That is, uh, in a technical way, easily to solve. But here you have, of course, first of all, to ensure um, the owner and uh, content providers from the repositories are also uh, contributing and um, facilitating such an harvesting. And one of the most uh, surprising exciting experiences from the last uh, three years was that um, over almost half um, of the repositories that we are claiming that they are providing open education resources are not accessible openly. That means they are claiming that they have open education resources, but you cannot access them. You cannot federate them, you cannot harvest them without registration, and some of them even without uh, with registration are not um, um, able to be um, harvested um, in any way. And um, yeah, that was leading to the strange situation that we have identified uh, many, many um, so-called open education resources that we want to federate and harvest. But we could not do that, even if they are claiming that there is open access. Yeah, that's also point here that uh, Stephanie is raising. Education um, is in, in many um, places, of course, not completely free. Um, at least for higher education, you have um, in many countries to pay um, a fee. But um, uh, in some countries, it's changing now. For example, here in Germany, we had uh, the same, same situation, but uh, now in all um, States, um, the enrollment fees uh, were reduced down only to the, let's say, normal, normal administration costs and um, the additional fee enrollment fees uh, of um, around 500, 600 euros were uh, now removed as a barrier, uh, as an identified barrier, and that's why it's getting, uh, again, more open and um, also facilitating such change in the institutions. Well, um, 
I don't want to speak the whole time. That's why please interrupt me at any time. Uh, I would very much welcome also your um, um, contributions here, as you're doing a lot now in the chat, but you can also speak up here, of course. But uh, due to the fact that the majority has no microphone with you, that's, of course, difficult. Um, just to answer the question from Krista, um, how to improve um, the situation? Well, um, what we have done um, one year ago is that um, we have um, seen a lot uh, into um, all the ongoing um, initiatives that are taking place in um, open research. Because uh, open research is setting up now um, digital um, databases and digital repositories for maintaining um, digital resources with easy and free access to all um, communities, to all uh, citizens worldwide. And these repositories are gaining a huge amount and gaining a huge um, interest uh, also by um, specific uh, communities in different branches and for different topics. For example, if you look at the field of agriculture and aquaculture, um, we have got FAO, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, who is currently providing several millions of free online and digital sources on um, ag agriculture. But that is not yet recognized um, by um, open education. That means many teachers and um, lecturers still have difficulties to find uh, the appropriate um, digital resources because they are even they're simply not aware that such resources are existing. And um, for that reason, um, we believe there should be also a closer connection between research that is producing a huge amount of open education resources and open education that could benefit dramatically from all these open digital resources provided by open research and developed by open research but currently not used in open education. That will be one of um, um, our major topics for the future. And um, that's why we have also invited um, many key stakeholders now to um, also establish an international initiative for that. And um, this initiative will uh, start this year. And we call this initiative ICOR. I will write it into the chat. And ICOR, that is the International um, Council for Open Research and Open Education. And um, we believe this uh, initiative should uh, only be dedicated to the promotion and lobbying for open research and of open and digital resources from open research in open education. And we hope that we can bring together the key stakeholders also, in particular, in the decision makers at the national and um, regional levels. Because um, currently, the, I would say the major barrier or major challenge is that we have to convince the people in the educational system for schools as well as for universities that they are opening up their mind and opening up the opportunities for open education. And that will, of course, need a huge change in the strategies as well as in the culture as um, Stephanie and Krista are now discussing here in the chat, because that is changing also the roles of the teachers and the lecturers. They are not expected to stand in front of the crowd, but to help them to learn as a facilitator, as a moderator, 
and that is changing uh, dramatically our way how to learn and educate in the future. And um, yeah, I think we are now starting the first steps, and that's why I was wondering about your experiences. What are your um, uh, maybe good uh, cases, good practices to share? What have you done? Um, what have you achieved? Okay, um, it seems that uh, this webinar is uh, really challenging from the situation that um, almost everybody has a microphone with him or her. Um, that's a bad condition for um, a round table, of course. But um, anyway, I think we have a very lively ongoing debate here in the chat room. And um, yes. Mm. Please highlight if you want to address uh, particular um, uh, topics uh, during the last remaining 15 minutes. And please speak up if you would like to share also your experiences and um, good practice cases uh, from the past, because I believe that we are all here to learn from each other. And that would also be my um, main interest also, maybe to hear your um, interesting um, Success stories or failures, because uh, we can learn from both, from successes as well, and maybe even more from uh, failures. Hi, it's Dion here again. Unfortunately, I do have a microphone. I just want to know um, this is a bit of the topic. Um, does anybody have metrics, or do you use metrics to rate the quality of the OERs, or is it basically subjective? And when you populate the, like Diego and those places, do you leave it open to people, or do you actually subject it to some kind of test? Well, um, to answer your question, Dion, um, uh, as I have not seen any other volunteers for that, um, we have uh, developed a rating system um, within uh, the already mentioned uh, BOA project. But um, to tell you the truth, it was very difficult uh, to convince um, uh, the practitioners from the field um, that um, agriculture and aquaculture to do a um, um, uh, rating or even a recommender system. Um, they are telling us, we have done a lot of uh, workshops together with them, that um, they would uh, only um, 
spend um, the minor effort just to give a rating system like up to five stars or seven stars, and you know from um, um, Amazon or um, Google recommender systems. But anything else, um, they were telling us, oh, that's too much workload. Um, um, we have already to share um, um, all the resources um, online, and we don't want to um, even review um, others. And even if if we are um, using them uh, for our purposes, um, then um, it's uh, enough uh, workload for us just to rate it as. Um, Four or five stars, and um, yeah, no, it seems that nobody is interested uh, in sharing uh, his or her experiences uh, due to uh, the lack of time. What we are now developing based on these uh, experiences from Voir is um, in the other major project uh, that uh, we are involved in, uh, that is the open discovery space. In the open discovery space, we are trying to achieve um, uh, such a rating system by setting up local communities. Because we have found out that people uh, would, first of all, be more interested in um, uh, getting in close contact at the local level, that they can even maybe learn to know each other personally and that they are building smaller communities. And in these communities, like in the social media communities, um, they are spending much more time than in the big um, anonymous um, And here we believe that it will be maybe um, easier to establish a, such a rating system. The challenge will be that we have then to apply um, the local ratings to um, and the resources and uh, spread them um, uh, yeah, throughout whole Europe and worldwide. But um, that is um, more or less only a question of um, agreement with um, sharing uh, such ratings as well as a technical problem. That's why we believe um, the solution could be go into local communities that are um, functional and working only in a very small area, and then share their ratings um, worldwide. Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Igor, for raising the question of the future of open education. Um, I'm sorry that uh, I'm speaking all the time, but it seems uh, that is uh, really the challenge here that um, almost nobody else has got a microphone here. Um, what I envision as the future of open education uh, is um, a different approach in um, applying for education in the educational system. And that will um, happen in the different uh, countries and in the di different regions worldwide in a different way. Um, come from looking on it from a European um, perspective, we have a very um, traditional and a stable educational system in most of um, European countries. That means it will take a lot of time, and it can only start as a, a grassroots uh, initiative, maybe supported by one um, fast movers uh, from uh, schools and universities, but not supported by um, national um, uh, strategies and policies. And um, for that reason, um, uh, I believe um, open um, will 
maybe take place first of all and getting a first uh, push in um, other regions uh, wide. Um, for example, um, in uh, Central Asia or also in Africa or America, we have identified um, um, in Latin America as well in um, Central Asia uh, a lot of countries as well as a not, lot of national policies um, that are pushing forward to a radical change um, of their educational systems towards open education. For example, um, I will go now uh, to Tajikistan this week um, and uh, in Tajikistan as well as in the other countries in um, uh, Central Asia we are establishing now new national, um, that means country um, system for formal education, starting with higher education, but that should also go down to school education later, for um, certifications of their um, learning designs and patterns, meaning that um, the professors and lecturers as well as the teachers can apply and design their own um, learning designs and patterns fulfilling the national curricula and then getting certified with also completely new and innovative uh, approach. That means they have not to follow uh, the national curriculum by um, just um, repeating one um, uh, subject and one lesson after the other one, but um, you can then also completely change the way how you teach and educate your pupils and students. And through that, I believe um, open education will get a lot of more practice as well as a lot of recognition. Uh, in these countries. They have maybe the advantage not to have such a um, um, long tradition of educational systems, that's why they are maybe more flexible, but that is um, for them opening um, the floor for such uh, immediate and radical changes of their um, way of educational systems. I don't know if that is answering your question, Igor. Yes, thank you very much, Jonathan, for raising uh, this um, initiative by the European Commission. At the end, um, this uh, um, initiative by the European Commission last year, and we have also contributed to that um, by also consulting and uh, the European Commission and contributing with our um, uh, comments uh, to that. Um, this will lead uh, to a um, new uh, policy that will be issued um, this year in June 2013 by the European Commission. And uh, the European Commission will, uh, for the first time, uh, publish a policy related to opening up education. And we are very pleased that uh, this uh, will be done by a first announcement at uh, the LINK conference. Maybe another reason to go to the LINK conference here. But um, you will see in June that um, the European Commission will um, take over the lead uh, also to the other European countries towards that direction. And I believe that is a very good initiative and hopefully also convincing um, the reluctant European countries to follow their um, recommendations. Uh, currently, I would say the European Commission is much more 
at the front than the European countries. And um, yeah, I hope that the um, Commission can push them. Okay. Well, it's um, one minute left. Um, maybe it's now time for a wrap up of um, our webinar today. First of all, let me apologize that most of you had not the opportunity to speak up due to the lack of uh, microphones. But I hope that uh, that discussion and uh, taking up some pieces from the chat discussion was also interesting for you. Um, we would like um, to kindly invite you to um, join um, our efforts here and uh, also to welcome you maybe at uh, the link conference uh, taking place in Rome um, in uh, May, 16th and 17th of May. But uh, most of all, um, you are um, most welcome also to join our initiative for the International Council of Open Research and Open Education. Everybody can join as a co-founder for free, and we would appreciate any collaboration with you in that field. And thank you so much for your participation. Uh, I'm available uh, via email. If, if you have any questions, please just contact me via email. I'm um, answering hopefully soon. Sometimes it can take um, a few days because I'm now traveling not only to Tajikistan, but also to Norway, Belgium, um, Portugal, and um, other countries. But thank you so much, and um, hope to see you soon again. And see you soon. Bye-bye.